it comes to fluid retention, there are certain nutrients that can help. But only one has been capable of completely getting creatinine levels back to normal. Catherine here, for the last 10 years, I have been helping people overcome one of the most underestimated yet dangerous conditions of our times. And if there is one thing that always works when it comes to directly improving the filtration ability of the kimi quickly and naturally, is focusing on nutrients with natural diuretic properties, like the foods of today's video. And the reason why these foods are so good for you is simple. You see, when the nephrons are damaged, our precious filters are not able to get rid of excess fluids as well as they should. Fluid will, in turn, accumulate in the body, causing many problems. Edema, the swelling of ankle and feet, and also sodium retention, a cause of hypertension, potassium retention, that will often force you to start avoiding certain foods, and even worse, sugar retention, a situation that may directly damage your organs. All these problems will directly make GFR decline faster. It's clear that getting rid of this excess fluid will do a lot of good to us. Removing fluids means directly improving the filtrating ability of the nephrons, which reflects on an improved GFR and lowered creatinine levels. And guys, there are 5 ways to directly get rid of excess fluids that are 100% natural and safe in all the stages. Don't miss our number one in particular because that's a nutrient that was used to bring creatinine levels back to normal, which means complete remission. But before that, number five, there are four foods that are 100% backed by science in their ability of helping us getting rid of excess fluids fast. Let's start with one of my favorite side dishes, which is also in season right now. I'm talking about asparagus. This superfood is one of the best friends of your kimis. It packs a stimulating blend of nutrients that help boost energy while neutralizing excess ammonia and other toxins. And there is solid research to confirm that eating asparagus can help with fluid retention and help rid the body of excess salt and fluid. This makes it especially good for those suffering from edema and hypertension. What not many people know about this delicious veggie is that cooking it in water may destroy some of its precious nutrients. Instead, try grated asparagus in a salad. Another superfood that will help you is dandelion greens. These are the red and green leaves that grow from the hollow stem of a dandelion plant. They come with an amazing property. They can help in a safe and gentle way, stimulating the body getting rid of excess fluid. This is because the dandelions that often grow as wildflowers in meadows and fields come with many little known benefits. All the parts of these plants are edible. And not only can the leaves, roots, and flower add a pop of color to your plate, they are also often found in many natural supplements where they used to support many natural bodily functions. Used to support many may be eaten in a salad to benefit from their direct property. They will directly help your filtering organs to function more efficiently according to science. Amazing what a little wildflower can do! And also consider celery. Celery has always been a favorite of mine due to its many properties. Celery is very low calorie, but what you will find in abundance in celery are nutrients with exceptional properties. Some of the antioxidants and natural compounds in celery are so powerful, they may have a significant positive impact on your well-being. Celery has long been used as a natural way to get rid of toxins. Today we know that thanks to a phytochemical known as phthalides, celery may act as a natural vas dilator and fight hypertension. Really great for you! Okay, there is maybe just one food that's even more effective in getting rid of excess fluids naturally than what we have seen till now. I'm talking about ginger. 
This is a superfood with some of the most peculiar benefits and I really believe that anyone should make it a regular on their table but especially those with CRF. First of all, ginger can effectively relieve the nausea that's often associated with this condition and it fights high sugar levels by improving insulin resistance. It also helps with fluid retention like all the foods of today's video and most of all, ginger is a powerful anti-inflammatory. It's so powerful at fighting inflammation in the body that it was even tested to see if it can lower creatinine levels. Now guys, you may have noticed that some of these foods also contain potassium. Question, should you be worried about that? Well, probably a lot less than you think. And I've explained why potassium in vegetables is not something you should be concerned with in my video up here. Watch it now for more. Okay. Now you may ask, I'm already taking the diuretic my nephrologist gave me, do I really need foods and other natural ways to help with that? You see, the thing is, what your nephrologist gave you definitely works. But like many other medicines, it also has a long list of less wanted effects that may give you trouble, some more serious than other. One of the most common issues in people taking this is due to depletion of essential nutrients. Most diuretics your nephrologist may give you will deplete your body of essential nutrients and minerals such as zinc, vitamin C and B1. Remember that even a single nutrient deficiency may be a serious problem and they are also linked to the triple whammy which is very dangerous. This is something you should be aware of. Now, there is one more thing that can be depleted by these pharmaceuticals. They can also lower the body's levels of a crucial mineral. Watch the whole video because this is the mineral you want to supplement the most as it also comes with properties that will help you in many ways. And that's our number one for today. Don't miss it. Before that, number three, good habits to get rid of excess fluids. There are a few good habits that will help you support your natural body elimination of excess fluids. Here they are. Eat less salt. This is really important, especially for those with edema. In fact, excess salt intake can cause you to retain as much as 1.5 liters of extra fluid, not to mention the effects on systolic and diastolic pressure. And did you know that 80% of the salt people consume every day comes from packaged, processed, store-bought and restaurant foods? Yes, avoiding the salt shaker is not enough to avoid salt. And also, move more. It sounds simple and it is regular exercise, but also walking help get the muscles in your body pumping, aiding circulation and helping to move fluid around and out of the body. Regular exercise is also a way of catching two birds with one stone because it helps maintain the correct body weight. Remember that 60% of your body is water, so losing weight is one way to reduce fluid retention. Not to mention that exercising lowers hypertension, controls sugar levels and cholesterol levels. Don't know how to start? Even walking at a brisk pace for 20 to 30 minutes a day may really help. Another very effective tip, cut back on refined carbs. Eating too many refined carbohydrates means the body will store them as glycogen in the liver, which attracts water. And this is just one of the several reasons why eating less refined carbs will help with lowering creatinine levels. Now, maybe the most important one, drink more water. Remember that water gets rid of water. If you don't have an allowance, 8 to 12 glasses a day are recommended because dehydration can make the body hold on to extra fluids. Also consider drinking teas regularly. And watch my video up here if you want to try a great tea. Now, maybe the most important tip. Many pharmaceuticals may directly cause edema or the retention of fluids in the body. So if you are already focusing on following a well-planned way of eating, cutting back on salt and getting plenty of exercise and activity, maybe it's time to talk to your nephrologist. I've met people in different stages of CRF who were able to achieve just that and all thanks to a better lifestyle. 
Lifestyle changes are one of the most important steps to improve your GFR. They also help with edema and fluid retention. And also get rid of any NSAID you may be taking. Other than directly damaging the nephrons, NSAIDs are also linked to sodium retention. And they are one of the three parts of a triple whammy. NSAIDs always are a no-no for anyone with CRF. Okay, as we have seen, keeping the right levels of two key nutrients may be helpful in controlling excess fluid, vitamin C and B1. Always make sure you are getting enough of them either from foods or from supplements if you suffer from edema. Now, there is one nutrient that's even more important. This one is often very low in people with CRF and without it, the ability of the body of processing fluids may be compromised. If you don't get enough of this nutrient from foods or from supplements, swelling may be a direct consequence. But you may also have trouble sleeping and in extreme cases even become depressed. To get rid of excess water and lower your creatine levels, get more. Number two, vitamin B6. B6 is key for hemoglobin formation, metabolism, brain function, and it also regulates fluid balance in the body. Studies found evidence that increasing B6 intake may directly help reduce water retention. Now, in people with CRF, B6 levels are often too low. This can directly cause fluid retention. Studies also link low levels of this nutrient to inflammation, one of the reasons to make sure you are getting enough B6. Question, what to eat to get more B6? You can easily increase your intake of this nutrient by eating more foods such as pistachio, quinoa, sunflower seeds, corn, and Brussels sprouts. If you don't eat these foods regularly, consider a supplement. Remember that B6 is water soluble. The body won't store it. This is why supplementing all the B group is recommended for people suffering from CRF or for those following a plant-based diet. B6 is key for those with anemia. As I was saying, it works together with vitamin B12 and folic acid to create hemoglobin. Now, I won't cover this topic today, but I've talked in depth about anemia and what foods and supplements really help in my video up here. Watch it now for more. And guys, there is only one micronutrient that's even more important than B6 when it comes to managing swelling, fluid retention, and hypertension. This is a mineral that's key to preserve GFR and lower your creatinine levels. And in a study, this nutrient was even used to send CRF into remission. Unfortunately, those with CRF very often have low levels of this mineral and that may cause hypertension, thyroid problems, phosphorus imbalance, inflammation, swelling, and even a faster progression to ESRF. To avoid this and to fight fluid retention, consider supplementing number one, magnesium. This mineral is involved in more than 300 enzymatic reactions that keep your body and rid of system functioning properly. Recently, magnesium made the headlines because low levels of this mineral were linked to a faster decline in GFR. Research also linked increasing your magnesium intake to reduce water retention. There are good sources of this mineral we can eat regularly. Nuts, especially almonds and also whole grains and leafy greens vegetables. These can all be regulars on your table. Nevertheless, magnesium deficiency is very common among people with CRF, especially those taking diuretics and in diabetics. It's recommended to supplement it in most cases. But there is one thing you need to know before starting to take a magnesium supplement. Most people with CRF are not going to absorb standard magnesium supplements. Guys, if you want to know exactly how to take this key mineral, this video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.